right, welcome to Movie Review Mom. If this is the very first time you've discovered my YouTube channel, yay, I'm so glad you found me. I've been waiting for you. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you wanna spend time or money or both watching a specific movie. So this specific movie I'm reviewing today is called Benediction. This artistic and insightful movie is now playing in theaters June, 2022. It's rated PG 13 and is two hours and 17 minutes long. My movie review mom grade is an A minus. Want to know why? Well, keep watching. I'm going to give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like, as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, interesting lines, funny lines, and even recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that I think you might also like if you like this one and vice versa. All right, so in a nutshell, this melodramatic story is about legendary 20th century war poet Siegfried Sassoon's lifelong quest for personal salvation through his experiences with family, war, his writing, and destructive relationships that go unresolved, never realizing that it can only come from within. Hopefully viewers will watch this story as kind of a cautionary tale and to learn from the mistakes that he made about life and love. This beautifully introspective film was written and directed by Terrence Davies. So the list of things that I like is long. I loved hearing the sensitive poetry of Siegfried Sassoon while watching his life unfold and seeing the experiences that actually inspired his writing. If you're unfamiliar with this poet, you're certainly going to receive an introduction through this movie. There is an incredible sadness and even melancholy to his poetry, and that's definitely echoed in the film itself. The talented cast includes Tom Blythe, Kate Phillips, Jack Loudon, Jeremy Irvine, Ben Daniels, Julian Sands, and Peter Capaldi, among many others whose acting is really fantastic in the film. I thought it was very interesting to combine old footage from World War I with the new footage of this film. It almost feels like a dramatic documentary or something. I thought it worked really well. Filming was actually done in Willen Hall near Wolverhampton, England. In the movie, we learn interesting trivia about the poet's life. For example, we learn that T.E. Lawrence, you know, from Lawrence of Arabia, was a fan of Siegfried Sassoon and even attended his wedding. So that's kind of cool. There's a lovely musical score and the dialogue is entertaining, insightful, and inspiring many times. Some of the transitions in act three are just fantastic. Others in act one and act two are a little too abrupt and there's some time bouncing around. Let me give you a list of things that I didn't like about that. First of all, as I said, the timeline does jump around quite a bit, which might confuse viewers. Sadly, the audience for this film may be somewhat limited as it's very British, bloated and eloquent with elevated dialogue. It's just not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But for those who are poets and writers and thespians, they're really going to be um, entertained and, like I said, inspired by the dialogue itself. The film starts with its focus on the war and military actions, and then it turns into more of a gay romance. Because of the flip-flopping, the tone seems to constantly change as if the movie's not quite exactly sure what it is. Is it a statement on military? Is it a statement on the artist's life? Is it a statement on uh, gay romance and homosexual relationships? Can it be all of those things? Of course. However, you don't really leave knowing what exactly the, the director and the writer wanted to say about one solid main idea, the big theme. Well, as you see, I'm going to tell you a bunch of themes that I 
was able to glean from the movie. Uh, there are several unnecessary scenes that I would immediately cut just to simply shorten the movie because it is so long. For example, there are some church scenes, um, some singing scenes that don't particularly add much. There's some dancing and that kind of stuff. Now, I mentioned the church scene. It, it's early on before you really know the characters, what's happening. It does... Um, reflect back on some important choices that the, this uh, poet makes in his life. I don't know if we needed to see them though. I'm just saying the movie's really long and it feels kind of long. Now, of course, it's also spanning a lifetime of this man. I mean, not from early childhood, but you know, from young adult on to the end of his life. And so that's hard to do that in an hour and a half. And I admit that that's for sure. It's sad in the movie to hear people talk so cruelly to each other. I mentioned that the language, the dialogue is often very elevated and inspiring. And it is most of the time, I would say the majority of the time, but there are some camp conversations that are biting. And I'm just like, ouch, why would you stay in a relationship with someone who speaks to you that way. And that's part of the story. Let me give you some tips for parents. Children and even some adults are going to be extremely bored. This is a talking movie for the most part. It is peppered with video footage and photographs of World War I. You know, maybe kids that are really into war might be interested in that. However, there is a lot of disturbing and real World War I footage and photography that shows dead bodies, terrible bloody wounds and that kind of thing. So I don't know how appropriate it is for young kids, even for teenagers, I don't know. So as a parent, you'll have to make that judgment call. So I just wanted to give you heads up on that content. There's also a lot of talk about homosexuality since the poet Siegfried Sassoon was gay. You see men kiss, dance and tumble around in bed just a little bit, but it doesn't go into the rated R category. And I'm grateful for that. I don't need to see all of that to know what's happening. Um, you also see some psychiatric patients and you hear them screaming and that can be disturbing and alarming for kids too. So I mentioned that the movie does seem to have a lot of different themes. They are truth, loyalty, personal honor, war, of course, yearning for what's been lost PTSD, trauma is a big part of the movie, writing and poetry, redemption, narcissism, talent, introspection, relationships, marriage, and infidelity. All right, so I always write down funny lines and interesting lines just to kind of give you a taste of the film. And I have them all on my written review at moviereviewmom.com, but I'll just share a couple of them with you right now. So there's this one character. Uh, he's one of the gay lovers. His name is Ivor Novello, played by Jeremy Irvine. And he's, he's talking about this woman and he says, she's not a woman, but more of a meringue with teeth. <laughs> and I just loved that imagery. And the way that they speak is very poetic, of course, very descriptive language, and just really fun and flowery and uh, fancy schmancy. And I really enjoy that. And then um, as the poet gets older, he's talking with his son, and his son walks up to him and he says, are you thinking great thoughts? And the dad you know, the poet says, no, I'm sitting here feeling petty. <laughs> and that one just made me laugh out loud. And then later he asks, why do you hate the modern world, father? And he says, because it's younger than I am. I thought that that was interesting and funny. And then there are some other interesting lines. Um, uh, here's an interesting line by uh, the character Stephen Tennant, who's played by Callum Lynch. And he says, enemies are always faithful. And there is a lot of love, friendship, enemy, frenemy type of relationships in the film. Anyway, before I go, let me give you some recommendations for some other movies that I think you're going to like. The first one is Downton Abbey. Now, it could be the first Downton Abbey movie. It could be the most recent one called Downton Abbey, A New Era. I liked both of them a lot. I love the TV series and it's very British. And there's a look at the aristocracy and the way that they live. And so if you are all about Downton Abbey, then you might be interested in checking out this movie. And then another one by the same director is called House 
of mirth. Um, check that one out again if you like this director's style and what it is that he is attempting to say. All right, that's it for my review. I hope that you really enjoy this movie if you watch it. Heads up on content so you're aware of what's happening or what's coming up in the movie. And uh, thank you so much for all of your support for spending a few minutes with me while I talk about movies. Love movies. Have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Oh,